Lesson two, healthcare providers, otherwise known as HCPs. An HCP is an individual that is licensed by a specific jurisdiction to, uh, to practice medicine or support other individuals who practice medicine. Um, HCPs are issued a bunch of different uh, identifier numbers, identification numbers that allow them to do different things. Uh, the main one that they, they need is an SLN, a state license number. Many HCPs are um, licensed to practice medicine in multiple states. And each state has their own method of licensing these doctors. And that's referred to as an SLN. NPI is the National Provider Identifier. This is a national number that's issued by the uh, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And this is important when you get into government contracting and what kind of uh, products can and cannot be um, prescribed based upon uh, your CMS uh, uh, qualifications. DEA is the Drug Enforcement Administration number. This is probably the most important one. This allows doctors, HCPs, to write prescriptions for controlled substances, which is obviously very important because most of the things you are, are when a patient goes to a doctor, most of the products that are prescribed are not over-the-counter OTC, but a doctor will prescribe a controlled substance. Um, HCPs are also known as prescribers in sales data. Now, often people uh, use the word, the term HCP, along with doctor, medical doctor, but you have to remember that physician's assistants and other individuals can also be legally allowed to write a prescription. And this can vary by state and, and jurisdiction as well. But again, the, the point here is that HCPs are known as prescribers because they are prescribing um, uh, data, or I'm sorry, prescribing medications for patients. So in some pharma companies, they allow non-writers, uh, individuals who are not allowed to write prescriptions to, to also be called HCPs, like office staff, administration, things like that. So it depends upon how your pharma company does things, but oftentimes they will also have HCPs being non-writers. Um, Third-party IDs, vendors that sell sales data, um, and many pharma companies also have their own unique identifier for an HCP. So you may have a customer identifier for your company. You may have a third-party ID from a vendor, and then you have the government-issued IDs as well. So there's lots of IDs, and we'll get to that in, in, in a few minutes. HCPs are placed in distinct buckets based on their specialty. So depending upon what the specialty is, whether it's internal medicine, pediatrician, they're bucketed based upon what that's going to be. Um, and, and specialties are the specific area or field that the HCP studied in medical school. However, an HCP can change his or her specialty over time. And that's, that's the next point right here, or they, have, they can change it over time and they also have secondary specialties. So they have a primary and secondary. So you may be um, a, you know, a, 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 a primary care physician, but you also have a specialty in diabetes because you're, you're working with uh, older patients who have type two diabetes. Um, although an HCP has a primary focus, they can also see patients outside of their specialty. I um, mean, there's hundreds of specialty types and subtypes, and we'll go more into that later on as well. So this is a very unique um, uh, topic to, to, to discuss, customer versus patient. And HCPs are considered the customer of the pharma company. So they are who the sales associates call on. They're the main customer. Um, a patient is your consumer of your product, but the, the customer is the, is the HCP because a patient will go to the HCP and the HCP will prescribe a, a, a product to the patient. So you're basically selling through as a sales associate or a pharma company, you are selling through the HCP to the customer. Um, we talk about uh, DTC a little bit. Pharma companies do engage in direct-to-consumer marketing, and you've seen a lot of these on TV, I'm sure. When you see like a, a, an ad for a, a medication online, obviously the, the patient can't go out and just grab that, grab that brand or grab that medication at the pharmacy. It's, it's, it's a prescription medication. So the reason pharma companies engage in direct-to-consumer advertising or marketing is because they want the patient to now go to their doctor and mention this specific brand or product that they saw on TV. And that, of course, it helps what's the, the marketing and advertising team is to help push their brand by informing the consumer, the, the, the patient, 
of the product and then trying to sell the other way back to the doctor so the doctor can give you the pros and cons of what's good about this drug and what's not good about the drug. And then the doctor and the patient can come to an agreement on whether it's, 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 it's good for them or not. Ultimately, the HCP is the one who writes a prescription for the specific product. Um, it's, it's, it's totally up to them. Um, HCPs are targeted by the pharma company based upon various metrics. Targeting is just a way to say, hey, I have a thousand doctors within, within this geographic area. I don't want to focus on all of them because all of them may not be good customers for me. So I want to have a subset of that. And we have a huge chapter on targeting later on. Targeting is, is, a, is, a, is a, one of the largest lessons we have in this course. Targeted HCPs have a higher value compared to non-targets. Just like with any other industry, some of your, some of your customers are, are, are at a higher level than others because they are buying more of your product. In this case, they are prescribing more of your product or they have a lot more patients or they're affiliated with multiple um, healthcare organizations, multiple offices, things like that. HCP classifications. Um, classifications are important for grouping HCPs together. Um, and, and this, again, is a way to bucket individuals. So you want to do trending and analysis on different groups of people. And grouping writers or non-writers may be very, very important for how you're looking at your overall uh, data within your organization. So sales associates will only be allowed to call on detailed physicians with a specific groups based upon the approved indication of their products. We'll get more into this in, in, a, in, a, in a product uh, lesson, but just to quickly go over it, if you have a specific branded product, a drug that has only been approved by the Federal Drug Administration, the FDA, for specific indications, then it makes no sense for a sales associate to promote this product to a, uh, a, a HCP with a specialty outside that. As an example, if you have a type 2 diabetes drug that's only been approved for individuals over 40 years old, then the sales associate would not go ahead and call and detail this specific product to a pediatrician because the pediatrician should not be writing this product to, to, to children. Now, the, the doctor, the HCP, can make a decision and say, yes, I want to write this product to anybody I want to. They're allowed to do that. But the sales associate cannot promote the product to the physician and go outside what the approved indication is. That's called off-label marketing, and we'll get into that later on. That is a big, big issue in the pharma industry, and pharmaceutical companies have lost hundreds of millions of dollars because sales associates improperly detailed a product outside its approved indication. So I just want to go over some HCP types and just say, so, you, so it, it's better if you look at the exact thing. So here's some HCP types. Now you have, what you have here is you have both uh, medical doctors, office staff, pharmacists, residents, and this pretty much gives you the different types of HCPs that are out there. This is a small subset and each pharma company is different, but I gave the example up here. You see that a health benefits manager may be called a plan manager at another company, may be called office staff at a third company. It all depends upon how your specific pharmaceutical, uh, your specific pharma company wants to group these HCPs together. Specialty types are different from classifications. Specialty type, again, is an industry-wide standard, but it's also based upon usually what the medical doctor specialized in in medical school. And again, a doctor can change specialties over time, but when you're in medical school, if you're specializing in a specific area, that's normally what you come out and practice. And then I just want to go over here some uh, ideas or, or, or some examples of the different kind of numbers. On the left side, you have a listing of HCPs by name, and then you'll see state license number, the various states where they're licensed, and then you have the NPI number, the DEA number, and you'll have third-party identification numbers as well. So one of your HCPs could have a bunch of different numbers throughout your organization, and then you, your company will decide upon which number it's going to use to identify that, that individual doctor through our HCP, rather, throughout all of your sales data and all of your metrics and dashboards and deliverables. Usually it's an internal pharma company number that they create, but oftentimes they may use an NPI number or a DEA number to identify them as well because those are national numbers assigned by the government that can 
that, that are consistent across uh, areas as well. That is the end of lesson two. You will now have a 10 question quiz.